a lot of this work really does take an inside out approach to communication. So the way that we talk about these issues and internalize these issues inside our organizations is going to be how they show up externally, right? So parts of our course really do engage with the self and engage with the team and provide you some language to have these conversations as a team. So if you're doing this course solo in your org, I would think about perhaps having a buddy that's on your team or in your organization to do it with. So you have someone to chat, chat with some of this stuff through. Um, and, or, you know, if that's not possible for you having a buddy in the course and you'll meet Alicia a little later, who's going to be our discord community manager, and we're going to figure out a way to create that buddy system and make it happen for you. Um, but bringing these conversations into real life and integrating and thinking it through is really how you design communications that land with people. Um, so it is that inside out approach that we really stress, um, the second one is really that we need to acknowledge that what we're working on is a complex problem, right? So like a simple problem, like the baking a cake has a recipe, complicated problem, like making a rocket ship is complicated, but there's a way to do it. And complex problems, we don't know how to move through. So we have to probe, we have to experiment, we have to ask questions. Um, and that can be uncomfortable, right? So we're going to work through that discomfort. And that's another reason we center emotions so much, as you'll see when I dive into the course. Um, but that's the reality of what's being called upon us right now. So we, we don't shy away from that. We engage it, even though we don't always know the answers because it's complex. Um, so that's a mentality we've really taken throughout the course. Um, and like I've said, it's community-led thinking and doing. So we leaned on community to create this content, and now we're leaning on community to help deliver it and create this space with all of you. Um, so right off the bat, we have our mindfulness toolkit that we really put together in order to start this conversation from a place of understanding ourselves and our emotions. Like Dom named right off the bat, like there is fear involved in doing this work. So if we don't acknowledge that, we're not going to really be able to move through it. Um, so we do have some meditations by the fabulous Carrie and Jyoti. I think Jyoti's on the call here with us. Yay. Hi, Jyoti. Um, but really, these are here for you to access at any point in the course to really give yourself the space to really think about some of these things. And by putting these up top, we're acknowledging that we know this work is tough and you're going to get into some heart work as well as, that, as well as that head work. So preparing for it is really important. Likewise, we have um, intention setting and this um, link actually helps you open up a learning guide where you can actually make a copy of this learning guide right into your local Google Drive. And this learning guide is like your reflection journal throughout the entire course. So it's broken up into, you know, even from the mindfulness toolkit sections that help you check in with yourself um, and really ask yourself important questions as you go through the course. Um, so that's a really uh, important feature. And I wanted to point that out because it is easy to miss if you skip setting intentions. No, no skipping. Um, but it's all there for you. Um, and finally, before we dive into the first module, we have some mindset work. So um, as we really lean into the intelligence of our emotions, we go into understanding um, how do we build a shared language around mindset? So once we name the emotion and know it's present, how do we move through it? And we really partnered with um, Shaliza Jamal of Curated Leadership to help us think through how to build this mindset framework. And we've built the framework um, to kind of represent the zones of learning. So whether you're in fear, whether you're in learning or whether you're in growth is really laid out and documented for you in your learning guide as well. So you'll see here, we actually have prompts to check in and like, what are the internal dialogues that might be going on in your head if you're in fear, if you're in learning or you're in growth. And it's natural to move between these kind of phases of zones as you do the work and our ability to identify that that's happening helps us enter the work in a more grounded and centered way and also helps us have a language for when we have those internal conversations and we can name like are we having this conversation from a place of fear what would it take to move us into a place of learning into a place of growth because we have to coach each other through some of this work it's not going to be easy and we're trying to build a language to help us do that effectively together 
Um, so this is really why we chose to start the course with the Jedi Foundations and positioning yourself. Um, you'll also, in every module of the course, meet the learning team that is going to be in the videos kind of helping you along the way. So you'll see their links and to their platforms and their bios here. And um, I'll give you a preview of some of these. Um, that and kind of this is kind of the style of learning. So it's like a living room conversation with um, some friends, some leaders that unpack different questions that we then provide reflection questions for right after the, the video. So these clips are anywhere between three to six minutes. So they're short, um, but they really help unpack and bring to light some conversations we think are important as we start this work and as we do this work. And then after each video, you'll have a recap and reflect. So you actually have the insights from the video um, reiterated for you, as well as some reflection questions. And those questions are also, of course, in your um, booklet here. So you can really uh, dive in, go deep, and then also have questions and insights to bring back to your team and, and start conversations and, you know, play the videos because they are short, right, that help spur some of these conversations because we know they're so important. Um, so that's the first um, module. It's really um, sets the foundation for that self-work that's required and, and really moves us into our second module, which um, kind of brings us into like lessons in online community engagement. And we've adapted a framework from, um, it's right here. We've adapted a framework. The first step in our framework. That is my voice. Um, we've adapted a framework. We're excited to introduce you. Again. Um, we've adapted a framework and there are voiceovers to make this really fun for everyone. Um, that helps us really map out what communications requires and builds a common shared language. So when we're collaborating and working together, we're thinking through these steps intentionally. And you'll see that as we do this mapping, a big part of this work is the relationship between the sender, which is you and your organization, the message you're crafting and the receiver. And a big part of how we get these messages to land authentically is taking some time to reflect on both you and your work and your organization's work, as well as the people that you're trying to communicate with. So I feel like I've seen and we've seen that you often skip this number two, you skip this, what is, what do I bring to this work and how am I thinking about myself and what does my organization, what context is it in, what, um, what values does it bring into this space? And we move right into creating a message and like what our communities are. So we kind of use this module to kind of slow us down and think through what are these steps intentionally? And just like the first module, we have community dialogues that uh, do this conversation work together. So because you're, you'll see um, community leaders think through and talk through how they do this comms work. So it really feels like a fireside chat meets Super Soul Sunday meets a learning journey. Um, that's the vibe we went through. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea of what you can expect in terms of course run through. Um, and finally, module three really brings us into the mindsets that we need to do this work, because we know that it's not just about crafting the perfect message, but it's really about bringing people along to understand why the message and the way it's crafted is important. So we have a few chats that really help us think through how to lead some of this work. Um, so you can flow through those there. And finally, last but not least, we have two amazing case studies. The first with Dr. Nahid Dasani, who shows up so brilliantly as a leader for his causes. And we really wanted to understand and emphasize that, you know, organizations don't talk to people, people talk to people. And when we are people doing this work, personal advocacy and, and what that entails needs to be a conversation. And if you do want to explore personal advocacy and what that looks like, if you do take on that role for your organization, this might be a really good case study for you to dive into and think about that uh, and think about what it's asking of you. Um, and this case study really goes really well with the first module, Jedi Foundations. And then the second case study, it's building a meaningful land acknowledgement. I think all organizations should go through this case study together. We really do want to create um, tools to help you 
build a shared language around what we're talking about when we say like authentic communications and engaged engaging your communities but also be able to apply those lessons and one of the case studies we really intentionally partnered on was with future ancestor services um, where Chuk um, really helps us understand land acknowledgements as a way to like live and breathe your values as an organization um, in a communications product, right? So this is an example of EDI, not just like living in a silo over here, but really like being embedded into how we do all of our work, whether that's comms, partnerships, how we deal with um, vendors, how we deal with finances, like it's all integrated. And I know that's hard, but this is ways we can start doing that, um, which is why we're really excited to have y'all here. So uh, really appreciate that. And then finally, a resource hub where we summarize a bunch of resources that kind of came through the course. 